hello everybody. Thanks so much for coming to this webinar, webinar, sorry, where we're going to be talking about the play In Search of a White Identity, um, which I hopefully you will all have seen because um, it was broadcast um, uh, as a video, as a film rather. I know you, don't I? Mickey? That's right. Patrick? So um, I'd like to kick off with the writer of the play, Clifford Kuju Henry, known as Cliff. Yeah, my name's Clifford Kuju Henry. I'm the writer and also the actor in Search of a White Identity. And um, I'm a new actor, also a new writer. But this is the first real drama that I've been in. And, um, and that's how um, In Search of a White Identity came about as a result of um, the Actors' Centre asking us to write pieces around working class lives. Okay, great. Thanks, Cliff. Um, Drew, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah. Uh, my name's Drew. I play the character of Mickey in In Search of a White Identity. Uh, I've been an actor for about 25 years, um, television and film. Uh, my roots are in theatre. It's been a really interesting, powerful journey for me working on this. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, Victoria, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Victoria Evaristo, and I'm the director of the piece. Um, as well as being a director, I am an actor and I am an acting coach. And how I came on board this project is that I met Cliff about a year and a half ago and he talked to me about his play. We we're just having a chat about acting and uh, theatre shows that we'd seen, blah, 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 blah. And he just said, would you like to direct my play? And I said, well, let me have a look at it. And I read the play and there was so much in it it was, it was astounding in, 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 in one sense, because there was so much in it, uh, but I really, um, I really understood the characters. So from the first read, I was kind of hooked with the story and the situation. Okay, great. Thanks, Victoria. Um, Dan, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, um, I'm Dan and I, um, I suppose I'm the filmmaker within the team. Um, so my, my background isn't in theatre at all, really. Um, it's predominantly film and TV work and commercials. Um, pr primarily as a cinematographer, but I do direct a bit as well and a bit of writing and, you know, the odd bit. Um, and I came on board the project through a mutual director who knows um, the producer of the project called Errol Etienne, who I've worked with many times before. Um, and he brought me on board and, uh, well, uh, gave me over to these guys to, to help shoot their theatre piece and realise it for the screen from what was originally a play. OK, great. Thanks very much. So, Cliff, going back to the beginning of the play, it was originally a scratch production, I think, wasn't it, at the Actors' Centre? OK, um, let's start from the beginning. Um... The Actors Centre occasionally, um, with actor awareness, asks members of the Actors Centre to do pieces. In particular, say, they ask working class people who are members of the Actors Centre to do pieces around working class experiences. So, yeah, what prompted me is how I felt at the moment, the rise of right, white nationalism, um, really reminding me of how I felt as a young boy raised in East London. Uh, so I kind of challenged myself to somehow try and write some dialogue that showed the experiences of both a white, black male and a white male being contained. I call it kitchen acting, close quarters acting. Listen. I've got nothing against you personally, Patrick. We grew up together. You keep saying that. You've got a problem with the government because it has no voice for you. And you're apologising to me. Yes, and so why did you think of um, a black man and a white man? 
for the play? The the relationship between and the historical relationship between, you know, black and white, um, you know, the ancestral trauma of slavery, um, class discrimination, um, but most importantly, uh, I feel because of the political force, especially recently, how we get played off against each other. And um, and that's why I chose that. Um, Drew, so you were, you were involved in the process right from the beginning. So yeah. how was that for you? How was it challenging? Working with a black actor around uh, race, um, working with the material we were working with, um, and there was a lot of uh, guilt and shame. It it was it's really difficult stuff to deal with, mm. and being a white male living in London, it's interesting because so you have these two two middle aged guys one one's black one's white you know racism is clearly um, the big issue between them at the beginning at least. Um, but you, Drew, have to create a character who's also sympathetic, right? You can't just play him as a baddie, and no. you don't just play him as a baddie, but also in the creation of that part, you had to find, find something in that character that would make him human. And, and I think that's the challenge, isn't it? All I want is my kids to live near and I want to watch my grandchildren grow up. No one is listening. So Victoria, so what was your goal with the play as a director? What was it that you wanted to, to communicate to an audience? Okay, um, I wanted the audience to be able to look at both of these characters um, objectively, which I, I know isn't easy because we all come with our own baggage and who we are, but to, just to be able to listen to both of their stories and not kind of take sides as such, but just to try and listen. Um, and, and then that become a catalyst for your own dialogue, you know, whoever you're watching this with or whoever else has watched it, you know, to spark some conversation with you. Uh, to, to ignite something within you. If, if, you're, if you're the type of person who maybe has never talked about these issues, you know, uh, what um, Mickey and Patrick talk about, you know, that for somebody like me, that's part of my dialogue, but for other people that might not be part of your dialogue, it might not be for, for part of your folk, thought process. So for me, I really, I really want the audience to go away and, and, just, and just think. And you know, it's a very, it's a powerful piece and it's very intense and it's very unusual. I mean, to have two, two guys of their demographics in a, a sort of face-off together in a theatre piece. I don't know if, I mean, I'm sure it's happened before, but I haven't seen it before. So it's a really interesting dynamic between the two. And I was thinking that the play really is a catalyst for conversation. It is the kind of play that I, th I think could talk and you have a conversation afterwards. And with Mickey's character, some of what he was saying, I was kind of agreeing with him, right? I was thinking, ooh, I shouldn't be agreeing with him. But, but it was so convincing. Some of what he said just, just felt so convincing. Some of the stuff I shouldn't agree with, shall we say. Look at the way you're looking at me. Why, they put us in the same cell. Sense of humour. They're playing us off against each other. Do you really think I wanted to go on that march? I don't know what you want. So, so the, the, the play is also exploring uh, male aggression, right? There is a lot of male aggression in there, yes. almost as the sort of default for these guys. And we know that that is very much a male thing. So would, would Drew, Cliff, Victoria, do you want to say something about that and how you, how you thought about how to portray that because it's 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 a dominant trope basically in the play. It's like they're in a power keg, um, the cell, and it's the cell that stops the explosion, if that sense. And because of that, that there, there, there's the there's the, the, the conflict, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and, and I wanted the audience to feel like 
any moment with the feeling of the claustrophobia, with the feeling of, you know, the two bulls in a one pen, I call it. Two bull in a one pen, yeah? You can't have two bull in a one pen. <laughs> and you feel like any moment they could charge. Well, I think, I think that explosive atmosphere was very well created. And there, there was, you were thinking, one of them's gonna deck the other one at some point. And Cliff, how about you? And how you managed your the the emotion of Patrick, uh, which included a lot of aggression as well. Perhaps not as much, well, not as much as uh, Mickey, but it was there. Yeah, it was there, and, um, and the character definitely had to play more of the survival game around Mickey, around the institution. Um, he knew that if if he attacked Mickey. Um, he could have been arrested for for uh, more serious charges. So that's how I played the character. Surviving, like how he has to survive being brought up in London, surviving, being locked up in a cell, that's the way I played the character. And there was times in the piece where I wanted Cliff um, to feel Patrick's fear in certain moments within the piece. And I said, it's not fear that you're scared of Mickey. It's a fear of what you might do to Mickey. So you've got to, you've got to have that little bit of control because if you don't, yeah. And if that, and I mean, it's Patrick, yeah. I mean, it's Cliff. If Patrick doesn't control his anger at certain points within this piece, yeah, there's going to be a murder on our hands and that's what's going to happen. So your fear is what you will do if you let go. And you know, you know something that is, that is, that speaks to society at large, doesn't it? All the ways in which, you know, black men are stripped of their dignity through um, various forms of discrimination, you know, stop and search and, and, and kind of aggressive racist, racist behavior from other guys and stuff. And it's always about self-control, isn't it? you have to hold it in and you have to you have to control it. Otherwise, it's going to get worse. And I think we definitely did get that. I'm just going to jump now to Dan because we haven't spoken to, <laughs> to him yet. So you came in to make the film, right? So yeah. can you tell us about that process? Um, but I suppose what struck me first was just trying to work out not only how to take it from a theatre piece and put it on screen and a lot of considerations about not losing something in doing that but more, most importantly to me more than that was about just trying to honor the sense of balance between the two of them I think and and working with and having conversations with the whole team Victoria and Andrew and Cliff about maintaining the balance between the two characters and take my bias out of it and and make sure everyone gets their say. It's interesting you said that you didn't want to show bias so how do you show bias when you're filming something? One very crucial thing about filmmaking, which is in theatre, but I think it exists a bit more in film, um, is that you're often telling something from a perspective and it's quite drilled into the filmmaking narrative in the way that you, you know, would choose shots or choose a way of portraying a scene, um, is you decide what perspective that scene is from and you try and make sure you stay true to that throughout sequences of films or entire films, um, because you can direct the audience very specifically in a way you can't necessarily on a stage. So, so it, was, it was sort of unlearning that a little bit and, and really making sure it always felt like a two-hander um, and it always, all the coverage was sort of equal between both of them, the, the time on screen, the, the types of shots we did. I think basically we replicated every shot for one of them we did with the other. Um, there was never a moment captured with one that we didn't indulge with in the other. That's so interesting to hear because I don't really know anything about filmmaking. And, and yet the acting wasn't um, restrained in the way that it might be in a screen drama. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was yeah. like a theatrical performance, even though it was filmed. And I, I suppose the, the, the sentence I'd always said is I'd want to, I want it, you'd be able to watch the film and feel like you could watch this live and it wouldn't change too much. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, you know, you couldn't ever get this on a stage and it would be the same. 
I went there once, I couldn't believe it. From Trenchstown to Hackney. I can kind of understand your anger. You paid your dues, haven't you? At the, at the end of the play, we feel that the guys have got more in common with each other than not, really. And that that's one of the really great strengths of the play, that in spite of their political differences, there is this bond between them. And yeah. often there is a bond that which for the people that you've spent your childhood with. You can imagine them, you know, going to a pub. It, and, and in fact, you know, if, if the two of them sat down in a pub, yeah, had a beer or maybe just a cup of tea, you know, builder's tea, very strong. <laughs> and just, and just, <laughs> and just, great, you know, they, 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 they'd have a lot that they could talk about. They really would. They really would. And as you say, they have got more in common than they actually think. Yes, and that's, I think that's a really positive message that people can take away from the play. I think we have to end it there because um, the hour is nearly up. So thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions. And I think, I think television's missing a trick if they don't come calling, to be honest, to develop it for television. But let's see. So thank you very much. And thank you, everybody who attended. And um, have a good evening. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.